Okay, so today I want to tell you about some really interesting systems called continuous cellular automata. And they can make lots of interesting two-dimensional patterns, these kind of kaleidoscopic fractals. Some really nice 3D models. And of course, 3D printable models. And so these were mentioned um, in Stephen Wolfram's book, A New Kind of Science. And he had a look at some two-dimensional systems like this. But recently I've been having quite a lot of fun looking at three-dimensional variations. Now, the idea behind these systems is that um, we have a grid of cells. Each cell has a value, in this case represented by a colour. And then whenever we update this system to get the next picture, what we're doing is just changing the value of a cell depending upon a really simple rule that just depends on the cell's current value and the values of its neighbours. So that's what happens every time we press the button. Now, what I think is really remarkable is just how simple the rule actually is. So, let me explain how simple these systems really are. So we start from a really simple initial condition where so we start from a really simple initial condition where the middle cell has a value of 1 and the other cells have a value of 0 and then what happens is that when we update the system all we do is we take the average of the current value and the values of the cells nearby and then we add on a certain parameter value and then we just take the fractional part of what's left. Okay, so if that calculation would have given us 7.89 then we just take 0.89. So that's all there is to it. We just start with a parameter value and a grid of cells and this is what we get in this case. So this is what happens when our parameter takes a value of 7 over 8. And you see it's really remarkably complicated. I mean, all we're doing here is taking the average value of a cell, adding 7 over 8, and knocking off the whole number part of that. That's the way we update each piece of this pattern. But just look how remarkable the thing that we're getting actually is. And another really interesting thing about these systems is if we just change this parameter a little bit, now we've changed it to 11 over 12, well, we get a completely different system. Let's run it back. This is running it backwards in time now. Okay, now forwards again. So you see now it's complicating itself in a really quite different way. And so, really, there's a lot of information in these systems, despite the fact that all you really need to do is specify a single parameter behind these systems. The, the amount of information and the intricacies of the patterns are extraordinary. I mean, just from a simplistic point of view, each of these pictures can be considered to be something like a kind of landscape, because... We have the kind of two dimensions of space, uh, up, down, and left, right. And also, we have that each of these values, well, that can essentially be viewed as a kind of height on a sort of landscape. So we already have a, a 3D picture. But, okay, I'm changing the parameter a bit now. Let's see what happens with 23 over 24 as our parameter. Not much. Okay, let's look something a bit more interesting. Okay, 17 over 24. Let's look at this one. So, each of these patterns on a given time step, well, that's kind of like a three-dimensional object. 
And also, of course, as we evolve time, we're essentially looking at different um, slides of the system. So we can think of time as another dimension. But the other thing is that, of course, we have this parameter. So if we alter this parameter, we completely change the way the system runs. And so what we can really think of is that for every parameter, and it's a continuously variable thing, we have another one of these sort of intricate um, sort of pattern generation processes. So one thing I think is really interesting is to fix the amount of time and then just change the parameter. Because as you alter the parameter, you're changing the whole way that the system runs. And um, so what we really can think of is that this whole rule space is like a well-ordered family of um, different pattern generation schemes. And as we alter the parameter, we can see how these small variations in the parameters um, lead to really vast differences in the kind of behavior that we get. And I think this is really interesting mathematically because it depends on the number theory behind what that parameter value is, whether it's, uh, let's say, um, 7 over 24 or 7 over 25. That could make a large difference to the pattern. So not only that, but also this whole thing can be viewed as a kind of high dimensional object. So let me just try and emphasize this here. So each of these pictures is obtained by running a rule from, um, well, for 100 time steps. And what I'm going to do is vary the value of this parameter from zero, sorry, from a half until one. And let's see what, how our pattern changes. So sometimes you just get these isolated parameter values that make interesting patterns. But as we carry on, we find a whole scene of really intricate systems. Each of these was created by running the trivial thing for a hundred time steps. But look how just altering this parameter a tiny bit affects the actual way the system runs. We see all kinds of different patterns. So there we have it. I think this is a really interesting mine to get different artistic patterns out. Um, I think it's an interesting thing to explore from a number theoretic point of view. And I'm, as usual, very interested to see what kinds of applications could come from something like this. Okay, so another thing we can look at are three-dimensional continuous cellular automata. So it's basically the same kind of idea as before, except now we look at the things in 3D. Of course, this immediately raises the question, how do you visualize these systems? I mean, now we have a three-dimensional grid of cells, and each cell has a value between 0 and 1. So how do we visualize that? Well, I decided to use color and ball radius. So the radius of a ball and the color of it both represent which value it, it has. And so what I'm showing you here is, well, it's a very similar system to before, just using a single parameter. And um, what we're doing here is just increasing the amount of time the system's running for, starting with a single cell with a value of 1, all the other cells with a value of 0. This is for a parameter value of 0.782. And you can see the system evolving over time. So it starts off as a single ball, and it complicates very fast. So these are quite um, easy ways to make remarkably complicated 3D structures. 
And the fact that um, you have all of this extra detail here, all of these different um, different colors or different cells which are obscured from view, makes visualization quite challenging. Okay, so each of these patterns was created by evolving our 3D continuous cellular automata for different parameter values. Um, so each time we do it for 10 time steps, but you can see by just changing the parameter a little bit, we get really quite different patterns. So this one here at the top left, this was for a parameter value of uh, 0 0.14. This was for 2.67. And then these two lower down here, this was for 0.432. And this was for 7.39. So in general, you tend to notice in this system that as you vary this parameter from zero to one, the patterns sort of shrink out of nothingness as like spherical things, and then they become more cube-like as the parameter value exceeds 0.5. But just like in the two-dimensional case, you get this whole continuum of different intricate patterns. Okay, so this thing here is a three-dimensional print that was obtained by getting one of these 3D cellular automata and evolving it and then just grabbing the results and um, well 3D printing it so how it, this was actually obtained was that we took all the cells which had a value of 0.5 or greater and we left those there and removed the rest and then just 3D printed the results and you can see that it's a really intricate structure I'm not sure my medieval 3D printer has quite done it justice, but anyway, um, you can still see what capacity there is for these systems to create some really interesting shapes.